Good afternoon, everyone. Today I want to talk to you about Operation High Impact Fatal Five that the police are running. It's an intensive traffic enforcement operation, which we're running for four weeks. It started yesterday and we're going right through to the 11th of December. We ran this operation earlier this year, uh, but disappointingly we had horror road fatalities um, last weekend and we're continuing. So far this year we've had 97 fatalities compared to 63 at the same time last year. We're going to be targeting offences of drink and drug driving, speeding, distraction, seatbelts and dangerous road users. We're saying that we want motorists, cyclists, pedestrians, everyone to consider their road conditions, where they are, when they're using the road. Enough is enough. Speed kills, drug driving kills, drink driving kills. We're becoming too comfortable on our roads. We ask that all motorists, cyclists, pedestrians concentrate when they're on the road. They make themselves familiar with the roads. We've had a huge amount of fatalities in the rural areas and people are complacent. We want people to stop making excuses for idiotic behaviour. We've got a new traffic campaign. We want you to remember those people not be remembered. There's fatalities that are occurring out there, families that are impacted on every person that dies on our roads. Thank you. Thank you, Joanne. I just want to concur with what uh, Joanne has said about this operation. It's vitally important that uh, people out there on our roads make sure they're aware of what's happening around them. We know, and police are targeting the Fatal Five, we know they are key factors in uh, a lot of the accidents and deaths on our road. We know the road toll where it sits, and in fact one person dying on our roads is one too many, but having the road toll as hard as, as it is, is not acceptable. So we know we need to do measures right across the board. As a government, we're putting more than a billion dollars into improving our road infrastructure uh, here across South Australia. Police are out doing their things with operations like this, which I fully support. Uh, and of course, we're doing the campaigning as well to make sure people are aware and doing all they can to stay safe on the roads. We ask people to make sure they take responsibility responsibility for their actions, they know what's happening around them, they're aware of what's happening around them and they get home safely. Think about yourselves, think about your families, think about your loved ones and make sure you do the right things on the road because police will be out there targeting the fatal five and there are no excuses. Minister, it's been funding an issue. We, we know that over the last few years there's been a reduction in the number of police bikes out there um, you know, monitoring traffic, monitoring people doing the wrong thing on the road. With that reduction, should we be seeing now more bikes on the road, more traffic bikes on the road to monitor um, people driving? Look. In the last budget, we put $52 million into the safety and security of South Australians, an extra $52 million to go towards policing here in South Australia. We're very proud of that. The Commissioner rolls out the programs and does an exceptional job to make sure that we have the right resources in the right places to keep South Australians safe. And again, they'll be out with this operation, making sure people are doing the right things on the roads. Do you think we have enough bikes out there on the road? Do we have enough police bikes? Oh, police bikes would be a question for the Commissioner. What we do as a government is put the money into SAPOL, and as I said, we put $52 million into SAPOL in the last budget to make sure the Police Commissioner can allocate that money and put the right resources in the right place. Now, SAPOL and the Police Commissioner are the experts here. They know where we need to put the resources, and they do that. I can say that every single police officer, whether they're on a push bike, a motorbike, a car, plain car, marked car, they will all be paying attention to this operation. So it doesn't matter what type of police officer you are, you are all paying attention to the road and the road fatalities. Is there any evidence or data that shows that crackdowns like this one do have an impact on crashes and, and fatalities? I can say that last time we ran this operation that we impounded close to 600 cars. It was 558 car cars that we impounded and we architested 85,000 people. And is that a lot more than what, how many would have been impounded or tested? I haven't got the comparisons, the exact comparisons that you're asking for. Uh, so are these effective then? Yes, they are. Uh, visibility, um, as soon as anyone sees a police car, a uh, police motorbike, a cyclist, anyone in uniform, they are thinking about what they're doing right and wrong, and this is where we can impact our visibility across all the state, rural and metropolitan area. So can you tell us what this operation will look like then, if you could mind standing? Um, 
what, what it will look like, will it be high visibility, will it be stealth testing, you know, what is, where are people going to be? Yeah, uh, look, um, we've got a multitude of tactics. Um, certainly there will be high visibility, the same type of visibility that we've seen um, during the Christmas period when we've done high visibility uh, testing. This will be the same, high visibility, every police car, motorcyclist, police cyclist, they'll be able to pull over a car, speak to people about what they're doing wrong on the road. Assistant Commissioner, I know that the um, operation ends on the 11th of December and I imagine that seeing as they were bringing it forward, it probably would have run closer to Christmas had we not have brought it forward. Are you concerned at all that people will become complacent between the 11th and when Christmas is? Obviously many more cars on the road over that holiday period. Are you worried at all that by bringing it early, that, that by bringing it in early that some people are going to forget before possibly the busiest time of year? I think the best way that people can remember is through our marketing, our media and certainly visibility when we see police cars. Um, traffic is a 12 month operation. We do this every day. It's a focus of all our police officers out there and we do run uh, further operations. There will be other operations over the Christmas periods. We've done that annually and we'll continue to do that. Are you sick of putting this message across? We are. Um, we're sick of being the person that picks up the cyclist or the, mo the motorist that um, has died. Um, we're sick of delivering that message to the family members. We're sick of having to be there um, and being the person that reminds them that 12 months ago one of their family members dies. Um, our police officers are sick of it. So are the other emergency services. We've got the ambulance officers, the fire brigade, the CFS. They are all in the same position as we are. We are sick of having to deliver that death message, go to that funeral or say to someone that their father is not coming home. So I would say that if you want to come home for Christmas, if you want to be the person that is there for Christmas morning, please be careful on the roads. Please be careful, think about what you leave behind because every single person leaves someone behind and there's an anniversary that tomorrow or the next day will be there whether someone has died 12 months ago, two years ago, five years ago, the impact is still there. Just in terms of 